Emergency Response Plan Introduction The purpose of this policy is to outline the Emergency Action Plan in accordance with Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA Regulations 29 CFR 1910.38A. This plan also will specify emergency procedures to be followed by personnel once an emergency is determined. These measures should be followed in order to protect life, minimize danger of personnel, to prevent harm to environment and to minimize the danger or loss of property. A major disaster may include, but is not limited to any of the following situations, fire, tornado, hurricane, bomb threat, or hazardous chemical spill, major gas release. In the event of a major disaster, this emergency action plan describes the initial responsibilities and actions to be taken to protect all employees until the appropriate responders take over. It is impossible to provide specific information for all situations. There is no guarantee implied by this plan that a perfect response to disaster emergency incidents will be practical or possible. Therefore, this plan is a guide for employees to familiarize themselves with basic emergency planning, response and evaluation. Preparation will increase the margin of safety in an emergency. Definitions The following are some definitions concerning this policy. Responsibilities It will be the responsibility of the plant manager to determine whether a situation requires emergency procedures. This includes Directing the orderly shutdown of facility operations where necessary Evacuation personnel when necessary Ensuring that outside emergency, such as medical and local fire departments are called as needed Notifying the Cameron HSE management rep of the emergency and the emergency response team Completing all necessary reports associated with the emergency. Conducting evacuation drills. Conducting classroom instruction on the general and site specifics of emergency planning and response. As the emergency coordinator, the plant manager, or their designee is responsible for ensuring that there is a current emergency response plan in place that covers foreseeable emergency situations for their facility and that the plan is reviewed annually or whenever a change is required. The plant, service, or general manager or his her designee will coordinate the notification of immediate family members in the event of a fatality. It will be the responsibility of the facility HSE management representative to assist the designated emergency coordinator on the development or any amendments to be made on this procedure. The HSSE management rep shall coordinate the implementation and development of the emergency response team in conjunction with the area managers and plant management. It shall be the responsibility of all supervisors to instruct their employees as to the content of this policy and periodically follow up to ensure compliance of policy requirements. Supervisors will also assist with the employee headcount process at the assembly areas. It shall be the responsibility of all Cameron employees to comply with the requirements set forth in the policy. Compliance with this policy is a condition of continued employment with Cameron. The emergency response team is a group of volunteer employees who will actively participate on the development of the emergency evacuation plan and also on the implementation and execution stages. The duties for the emergency response team members include, but are not limited to, evacuation support team, fire responders, first aid responders, emergency equipment de-energization team. The evacuation support team will be responsible for Plan training exercises to test the evacuation plan effectiveness. Determine method of monitoring emergency situations. Assess nature and extent of all emergencies. Direct all initial emergency actions including the following. 1. Order evacuation, if deemed necessary. 2. Take any other immediate action necessary to protect life. 3. Notify the appropriate authorities of emergency. Provide status and other reports to the HSSE management rep and the plant management. Assume initial control of the emergency until local emergency responders arrive, then 1. Obtain volunteers to carry out supporting actions. 2. Develop system to assist disabled or handicapped persons who need assistance. The fire responders team will be responsible for ensuring that everyone in their assigned area are evacuated in a brisk and orderly fashion in the event of a fire. They will notify other employees by voice, air horn or pulling station.
The fire responders will also be trained on fire extinguisher operation and fire safety procedures including the location of fire extinguishers and emergency evacuation procedures. The first aid responders will be the first line of response in case of a medical emergency. They will administer the first aid aim and will determine if further medical help is needed. If an outside responder agency needs to be contacted call the front desk assistant 281-809-1300 who will address the call properly. The emergency equipment de-energization team will isolate power from equipment in case of an emergency. They will also perform proper lockout tagout procedures for emergency response purposes and emergency preparedness. Emergency response team members are not expected to endanger their own lives to assist with evacuating an employee, contractor or visitor. Responding to an emergency. This is the Cameron Thomas Road Emergency Response Protocol. When an employee observes a situation that could potentially harm health, environment or property, he must notify the emergency response team member employee responsible for that area. Then the emergency response team member will assess the situation and will determine if this is an immediately dangerous to life and health condition. An immediately dangerous to life and health condition is an atmosphere that poses an immediate threat to life, would cause irreversible adverse health effects, or would impair an individual's ability to escape from a dangerous atmosphere. An example of this condition would be Blinding but non-toxic smoke could be considered an immediately dangerous to life and health condition under the OSHA definition, if it would impair the ability to escape a dangerous atmosphere. Warning devices such as air horns, intercom system or fire alarm pole station can be used to facilitate this process. These devices are thoroughly distributed within the facility. In building if the pole stations are located near to the emergency exits, for buildings A, G and the Annex, the air horns are located on visible locations where they can be easily accessed. In the event of an unplanned emergency evacuation or drill, all personnel shall follow the designated evacuation routes for their area or location and proceed to the designated muster point area that does not represent a threat. If an evacuation route is blocked by the event, which precipitated the emergency then an alternate route shall be chosen. Managers, supervisors and emergency response team members shall verify that all individuals who work in their respective areas are accounted for in the designated assembly point. Employees, who at the time of an emergency are located in an area of the building they do not normally occupy, shall evacuate to the closest assembly area to the location that does not represent a threat. These employees must then inform the lead, supervisor or co-worker about their location. No one shall be allowed to leave the property or re-enter the building until the plant manager and the emergency response team members determine that it is safe to do so. The North Assembly Area Muster Point 1 is located at the north part of the property in the grass area between buildings F and G. Employees on the proximity of this muster point should proceed to the designated evacuation route and emergency exit to the Assembly Area 1 and remain at this location until further actions are determined by plant management. The South Assembly Area Muster Point 2 is located in the parking lot of the Annex Building. Employees who at the time of an emergency are in the proximity of this area should proceed to the designated evacuation route and emergency exit to the muster point 2. Personnel remain at this location until further actions are determined by plant management. In the event of a major medical emergency and until rescue personnel arrive, first aid responders will administer first aid in the building or, in the event of a complete evacuation at a designated safe assembly area outside. Call the front desk assistant if the injury is life-threatening and provide the following information. Nature of medical emergency. Location of the emergency address, building, room number. Your name and phone number from which you are calling. The front desk assistant will address the call properly and will contact the emergency response agency. Do not move victim unless absolutely necessary. If personnel trained in first aid are not available, as a minimum, attempt to provide the following assistance. Stop the bleeding with firm pressure on the wounds. Note, 
avoid contact with blood or other bodily fluids by using a blood-borne pathogen kit. Clear the air passages using the Heimlich maneuver abdominal thrusts or chest compressions in case of choking. A Cameron employee will be sent to the main access gate to coordinate the emergency response agency arrival to the site. The outside emergency response agency will transport the injured employee to a medical treatment facility and he she must be accompanied by another Cameron employee. The phone number and direction of the medical treatment facility where the injured employee will be taken to, must be obtained from the emergency responders. The supervisor or the HSSE management rep will contact the case management service axiom for further assistance. 877-502-9466 If the injured employee is not a Cameron employee the agency, who the employee belongs to has to be notified about the incident. Axiom is a medical consulting firm that provides guidance services on how to properly manage the medical case emergencies. This service is available 24-7 and it is to be used by trained personnel. On any first aid case incident the first aid responders team will be responsible for administering the first aid aim on site. Some precautions such as blood-borne pathogens kit and personal protection equipment are to be implemented to avoid contact with bodily fluids. The HSE rep and the supervisor must be notified about any incident. The HSE rep or the supervisor will monitor the injured employee and will determine if employee is okay to perform job duties. Axiom can be contacted if further assistance is needed. Cameron Thomas Road Authorized Medical Treatment Facilities are for first shift U.S. Health Works for second shift, weekends and holidays. ER Ortho and U.S. Health Works upon request service. Other emergencies including but no limited to, facility threats, power outages, suspicious package, civil disturbances, workplace violence, hazardous substance spills, and severe weather preparedness, norm incidents will be managed case by case by the plant management and the HSSE management rep. Emergency Response Team Emergency Response Team Members Fire Responders Evacuation Support Team First Aid Responders Emergency De-Energization Hurricane Preparedness The decision to close the Thomas Road Drilling Systems Facility will be based upon the projection of a threatening situation. Bulletins issued by the National Hurricane Center, Houston Area Center for Emergency Management, and Cameron DHQ will be considered in determining the implementation of emergency procedures. The operations manager or acting designee may close the facility in advance of a hurricane severe weather warning depending on local conditions. Once the order to close the facility has been issued, the facilities department managers Supervisors or person responsible will be the assigned personnel for powering down the AC units, placing trash and paper bins inside, securing buildings, placing sandbags, locking elevators and doing other duties related to storm preparation. Non-facility personnel, that is visitors and contractors, should no longer be present at the facility during this phase of preparation. Employees may also call the Cameron Employee Emergency Announcement Hotline 1-866-380-0226 for information pertaining to site closures, changed hours, or other important information. Additional time off for personal reasons due to an evacuation will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis.